Professor Mary Ruth McDonald. I'm a prof in plant agriculture at the University of Guelph and much of my research program is here at the Muck Crops Research Station. Uh, the work here at the station is focused on the vegetables that grow in the Holland Marsh. Um, the Holland Marsh in Ontario has always been um, a place where uh, immigrants come to farm. So it was established in the 1930s and there have been many waves of immigrants since then. So um, Chinese vegetables have been grown here for 40 or 50 years and over the years there's been a wide range of uh, other vegetables that uh, we would consider ethnic vegetables, um, things like uh, edible amaranth. Um, I guess um, edible chrysanthemum probably falls into the Chinese uh, vegetable category. Uh, but there are people from um, all parts of the world, including China, Vietnam, Egypt, um, Africa, um, wide range of different groups, and many of them grow the crops that they like to eat. This crop is Shanghai Pak Choi. Uh, it's called Shanghai because it's a paler green color. And Pak Choi has a green petiole. Uh, many people are uh, familiar with Bok Choi and it has a, a white petiole as opposed to green. Shanghai Pak Choi and many of the other Chinese greens, baby bok choy, uh, flowering edible cabbage, uh, some of the mustard greens are widely grown in the Holland Marsh area and it, it's a well-established industry. Some of the uh, growers farm in Ontario in the summer and they grow the same crops in Mexico during the winter and so they have their marketing uh, chains well established. In fact, I'm seeing Shanghai Pak Choi in almost all the grocery stores right now. There are a lot of other um, uh, ethnic vegetables that aren't as well established. We've done trials on a number of them here at the research station over the years. Um, these Chinese brassica crops grow very well on the marsh where it tends to be cool. Uh, but some of the cucurbits, like fuzzy squash and bitter melon, you could grow them here, um, but it wouldn't be economical to do that commercially because it's just not warm enough. The same grows, goes for crops like okra, which we've tried, and that grows here too, but the production wouldn't be high enough. Whereas on sandy soils in the Norfolk area, a uh, crop like uh, okra would grow very well. One of the ones we've looked at recently is amaranth. It's a close relative to pigweed, and uh, pigweed grows pretty well just about anywhere in Ontario. Uh, it does grow very well here, and there have been uh, other trials at the Simcoe Research Station where they've been looking at different levels of nitrogen fertilizer and more production aspects. Uh, there's, there are challenges in every kind of agriculture and uh, with new crops sometimes there are even greater challenges. One of them of course is crop protection and um, getting uh, products registered to control insects and diseases and weeds on minor crops um, is, takes a long time and it can be even more difficult than it is on more conventional vegetable crops. Uh, that's been a challenge to us. A grower will bring in um, a crop to the research station. We can identify what the disease is, but there may not be anything registered that can, the grower can actually use to control that disease. And weed control is a major challenge. Uh, most of the weeds are uh, weeded by hand, which uh, really increases the labor costs. Most of these crops are hand harvested also, so labor costs are uh, definitely an important component. I think the future for ethnocultural vegetables looks bright, certainly. Um, not only are there people of many cultures who want to eat the food that they're familiar with, 
but more and more people are interested in a wide variety of foods. I've seen uh, recipes for pak choy in Chatelaine magazine, for instance. Um, so the, the demand, I think, is only going to increase. Um, the rest of the future, uh, we need to do research on both production, uh, but handling and post-harvest storage.